Tales from the Flipside family. I'm back. Yeah, uh, sorry about the uh, choppiness of, uh, you know, it's just real life. It's stuff gets in the way. Uh, but we're going to try to be here as much as uh, we can. Today I got something a lot of you may already know how to do. Some of you have already done. But for those who need to know how to do it, and maybe you've got some suggestions for me, you can put it in for the, all of us to, to learn from each other. Uh, in the comments section about taking in collections. So I took in a collection on Saturday, uh, uh, actually a week ago, uh, last Saturday. Um, eight bins of comics fit about, in these kind of bins, you fit close to 400 comics. So I had somewhere near 3,200 comics, plus a short box, which was weird that he had a short box. Of course, that had all the good stuff in it. Already had it pulled out. Um, so this was a person that kind of a little more savvy. They were, it wasn't their collection. They flipped houses. This was in one of their houses. They had already made uh, a lot of money on the collection. Uh, this was what they had left and they wanted to dump it. Uh, they had already had it cherry picked by another shop. And a lot of people say, why would you want that? Well, because I don't want to see it go in the landfill. Um, I have a very hefty dollar bin. Dollar bins do really well, especially this collection was completely, almost completely Bronze Age and early copper. Um, so if I can get those in the, in the hands of readers, because there's some really great stories from that time period, I'm going to do it. So I also got it for um, what I think is the right price, but um, I paid uh, 2500 uh, plus 300 in trade and they took like pops and and stuff like that. So I, I think I did all right. There was 15 copies of X-Men 104, 12 copies of X-Men 103. Uh, there was the first appearance of Slade uh, and Teen Titans, uh, Deathstroke. So, you know, I think uh, when I look at all the keys and then the stuff that they didn't pull out that was keys, um, I'm going to do all right, especially since, uh, you know, even if uh, I only got a dollar a book, there was 3,200 books, I would make my money. I would make a little bit of money. So worst case scenario, I'm still going to make out. Oh, plus there was a whole group of toys and I'm going to show you some of the toys at the end and talk to you a little bit about expanding beyond comics in your store. Uh, sort of a little bit of what uh, Dennis talked about in, uh, from Wonder World. Uh, when you have a retail store, you know, what can fill your shelves and what you can really make some extra profit on. So let's get into what I do. So the first thing I do when a collection comes through the door is I'm going through looking at uh, all the books, trying to mentally see um, you know, all the key issues that are in there and about what their values are and start adding it up in my head so I can make it, you know, uh, an educated offer. Um, and I go through it very fast, I, you know, flip through it pretty quickly. Um, if the person has particular books, they, they think are worth a particular amount of money. And we have to, you know, look at really strong, like, you know, a book that's like a thousand dollar book or something. We have to agree on the, the condition and all. That's that's separate in the negotiations. But this is going through, you know, basically what my buddy calls soup. Uh, you know, just a little bit of everything. You're just going through rapid pay, pace, get, getting an idea. Once that's done and the deal's done and I've paid the money, now's the time to go through and then take back, go back through and take out all of the key issues that I know off right off the top of my head. And what I like to do is immediately, uh, when you get a book that's already bagged and boarded, um, I never trust a bag and board that comes from somebody else. Even if they just rebagged and boarded it, I want to uh, get it out of that. Because if it's an older bag and board, it could have some acid in it. It can damage the book. This is a minor, minor key. It's probably gonna end up in my dollar bin. It's a, it's a, it's a $3 key. It's the first appearance of um, Amazing Grace, which is one of uh, Darkseid's elites. 
Um, you know, but you just bag it up and you're like, boom, there you go. Even if it goes in the dollar bin, you know, it's a couple of cents added to the book. I probably, when it's all said and done, I probably paid 15 cents a piece for these. So, you know, good profit, 15 cents to a dollar uh, on that. And because it's a key, it'll probably be pulled out of the dollar bin pretty quick. And then, you know, there's some, like I said, there was some uh, Bronze Age goodness in there. Uh, these older detectives, even if they're not a key issue, and I haven't looked this one up, I'm not 100% sure, but you know, it's a great looking cover and stuff like that. But you know, you give it the sniff test. You smell it and it's all, oh, mm, it's a little musty. You know, it's uh, probably been kept in a damp place. And that's, uh, so here's a trick that I use. Um, we go, you pick up these, now, I picked up these uh, at the dollar store, so I didn't get the unscented, but I usually get unscented. Um, I didn't have time to go order them, but these these will cost you between two cents and four cents, uh, these dryer sheets. And you get two dryer sheets, and you put uh, one in the front page, And then one on the back. You want the unscented because the, the scented may have uh, a chemical or an oil that will um, react. And then it'll also give the comics a certain scent. So you, you want to stay away from that. So um, then I put it in a bag and a, a bag and a board, you know, and um, I'll put it in a, uh, in a box with other books that I have done this to. Right, and then periodically I'll go in, and um, does it eliminate it completely? Sometimes, like if it's a very mild, it'll take it out completely, but it, it definitely um, takes that mussiness down a lot. And you know, if it's a decent key issue, you know, it might uh, help sell it a little bit down the road. But also do that; it also keeps down the smell in your shop because you will get these musty books in. Listen, also it's your store. If you, if you say, hey, if the books are musty, I don't want them. You know, that means that they have a little bit of mildew or a little bit of mold on them. So I, I keep everything out of the landfill and it's not an ecological thing for me. It's, uh, I just love this art form so much. I hate to see it ever end up in the garbage, so. And then there's a, uh, in this collection, uh, you know, there's a good couple of good key issues. This is like uh, in mint, this would be like a $25 book, but that's so that's like a $10 book. But then you'll come across, this is like a $40 book in mint, but this, this is in my 50 cent bin. I just pulled it out of the 50 cent bin because that's also the first thing I, uh, after I've got the collection, I've pulled out all the, the major keys. Then I'll go back through and I'll pull out all the damaged books. All the books I'm gonna put in my 50 cent bin. So this would be a $40 book if it was in mint, uh, Avengers 158. But uh, you know, it's got a lot of water damage. Um, it's got a lot of bleed through from, uh, from, the, from the dampness. Uh, there's rips and tears in the cover. So somebody's gonna get to read this $40 book for 50 cents. Um, and then, you know, maybe they'll press it. Maybe they'll put, uh, I probably will use some fabric softener in it and just put it in a 50 cent bin and leave it in there um, just to keep down the smell in the shop. But uh, yeah, so, and then <clears throat> the other thing is, is when, you know, multiples are a great thing for your comic shop. So this collection not only was uh, Bronze Age, but it was Bronze Age multiples. Um, so there's three super villain number 12s, not a key issue. But, um, you know, you can start to build sets and series when you get it, come across stuff like this, and then they sell even better. So there's, uh, you know, three number, three number 11s, four number 11s, four number 12s. We got more number 12s, so that'll probably... And so, and when you get them at the right price, if you're getting your bulk at 15 cents a piece, when you get a book like this, even, even Bronze Age books, it's got a little crease in it, dollar bin, 50 cent bin. You know, it's, um, it's, 
It's a great way to pass these on and build collectors and build raiders. Um, I can't stress that enough. I know I probably say it every single video, but this is your mission. These are the people that's going to carry your company, your business into the future. You know, um, sometimes I'll even give some of these older books. If there's a new kid and he's excited about comics and he's buying new comics and his parents are bringing him in, I'll take some stuff out of the dollar bin and the 50 cent bin and just give it to him. Um, you want to keep them excited and, and, and really, uh, you know, keep their love affair of comics going. Um, and then sometimes this stuff becomes so unattainable. It makes people bitter and it, and it, it turns them off. And then they're like, you know, why am I even doing this? I'll never get the books I want stuff like that. That's why, you know, I'm, I'm one of the people that love the facsimiles. You know, a lot of people, there's some haters of the facsimiles. There's some people trying to make ridiculous money on the facsimiles. Facsimiles are great for those people who've entered the market late, who would really just love to read the story. They don't, they don't want a nine, eight of a facsimile of, you know, uh, Submariner number one. They don't want a, a CGC, uh, pressed book. They, they want to be able to read the story because the original copy is so far out of their range. They'll never get to actually read the story. Um, so make them available to them. Like, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I think putting them out on pay on your Facebook page when they come out, um, if you can buy a few extra issues of them and so that you'll have them around when, when new customers come in, um, I find is a great thing. I love when they go on, like when they go on closeout, but obviously cause everybody's trying to make, these don't go on closeout anymore. But when they used to go out and close out, um, man, I used to buy up a bunch because I loved having them around for when somebody says, Hey, can you, you know, recommend something? And you know, you know, it's just a great story and it's like the beginning of stuff from Marvel or DC. I mean, image is doing a great thing with their firsts. Um, you know, their dollar books, uh, we can buy them for 50 cents from time to time. You can get an extra 10% or 15% off. Uh, through diamond so actually image is giving it through diamonds to you so you can get them you know sometimes as low as 40 cents 45 cents uh, they're another great thing to, to have around um, you know the walking dead a lot of times I have you know we talk about property comics all the time people come in for the property comics and they're there and you know it's great if it, I paid 45 cents for it if a person shows interest in it and buys a couple of back issues of, of the comic I may give them the first and so, well, here you can read number one at least. So yeah. So when you, I've gone way off on a tangent <laughs> back to bringing in the collection. So I will then go through the entire collection, uh, book by book. Um, I'll grab whole big handfuls and I'll start going through them and you know, I'll still miss, um, you know, you can't know everything. So I use two, a couple of different websites. Um, you know, uh, I use key collector. Uh, it doesn't have all the keys in it, but it has a large amount of them. It has a ton of them, especially when it's Marvel or DC. Um, I also use comic book realm. Now their pricing is usually way behind the market, but they have everything like, I won't say they have a hundred percent, but damn near it. Um, and especially when it comes to, um, all the different variants. So on key collector, they do have the variants, but they'll only have those variants that are, that are actually there's interest in and there's the prices are going up and stuff, but there's some oddball variants that maybe not in the market because one, they're really, really rare. Um, and two, they're just like, it's an artist that nobody's interested in or something like that. But I still need to know, you know, if, what issue it was, you know, you can find the issue on the front, but uh, from what series volume because Marvel doesn't always put the volumes in there. Comic Book Realm is a great spot for that. I also use Comic Book Price Guide, uh, which I used to use, I think used to be called Longbox. Um, and I have a subscription there too. And um, that's just, they have a lot of the publishers and you can search by publisher. 
Sometimes that makes sense for books that I don't have an idea how to, how to look them up. And listen, even reading comics for 40 some odd years now um, and being in the business eight years, there's still stuff I don't know. If you're new to the business, there's probably plenty of stuff you don't know. Um, and that probably leads me into like, I have like a, a, a mantra that I live by, PPEV, right? Preparation, hone your skills, um, set yourself up um, to, to learn what you're gonna be doing. And um, that's the preparation side. Uh, planning is then how you what I talk about on here, how to set the business up, all the stuff, set up a plan in the beginning, and then it's about E, the E is for execution. Execute your plan. Like uh, I always point out the Patriots. They don't always have the best team under Bel Bill Belichick, but man, they're always in the game and they're, you know, they, they've won a ton. A lot of people put it on Brady. Some people put it on Belichick. I believe it was a combination, but if you uh, pr prepare, plan, and then execute, victory. That's what the V is for, is victory. You're gonna succeed. So uh, that's just a little, uh, little mantra from me. But uh, yeah, so then I'll go through and I'll break them up into Marvel and DC. Um, I'll go through uh, and put in each uh, through with issues like Hulk with Hulk, She-Hulk with She-Hulk, all them together. And then I'll go through another, like I'll probably use Comic Book Realm just to quickly see um, where the, the issues of value are. Uh, some, some common issues of older Bronze Age and uh, late you know, Silver Age and even some Silver Age, even though it's not a key issue, it's still a 20 or $30 book if it's in mint. So, you know, I look through that and then those books will go either in, in my regular back bins in stock, uh, then they, if they aren't, if they're like a $3 book, they'll go in my dollar bin. I, I'm not gonna sit them uh, in my regular back bins for 10 years to try to make $3 when I probably will sell it for a dollar very quickly. Um, it's my procedure. Not everybody does that. Uh, we are gonna be changing uh, our process for this uh, coming up. Uh, there'll be an announcement of what we're gonna be doing and we'll go through you ha uh, that whole process. A company that has done trading cards for a long time. I'm pretty sure the announcement's already out there. Uh, TCG player, we've been a pro dealer for about four or five years. Um, we, they got purchased, they first came to us, not only us, but a lot of other dealers to start doing sports cards and comic books, um, which I bo have both of, um, right shortly after they started contacting dealers, they got bought by eBay, which I've closed my eBay store. Um, and now I have to deal with eBay again, but they, they say they're going to still be, uh, separate. But anyway, we're gonna go through all that of, of my process of moving over uh, a good amount of our inventory online to TCG Player. I don't know if their comic book section will still be TCG Player or they're gonna rename it. They haven't said. Uh, but, but that's the other thing about getting everything in order. Then it's gonna be very easy to upload into um, CSVs. Um, online that you don't have to upload the picture. Uh, we're gonna look into how they're all gonna do that. In the future, they're gonna have a scanner, so you're just gonna be able to scan your comics, so everybody will be able to, not only be able to see what comics you have, but they'll be able to see the condition of your actual book. That's in a later episode. But so, like I said, I paid uh, $2,500 plus, so basically you take off 30% of the, the uh, $300 trade um, and so another 210. So let's say I paid $2,800 for all the comics and it came with some toys. Let me grab some of the toys and show them to you. Um, when people bring in collections, a lot of times, especially comic book collectors, they have other stuff along with their collection. Statues, toys, don't turn them away. If you can get them at the right price, it's great. Um, so basically, I got um, some of these great 70s toys. Um, I want. I looked at it, I was paying 
$2,800 for the comics. Um, he can look at it whatever way he wants, you know, that he, I paid a thousand for the, the toys and, you know, cause he had a high values on the toys. I like to think of it as I ended up getting these toys for free. So, you know, you look these up on eBay, they have some crazy prices on them. We'll, we'll see. I mean, I may end up putting these, um, in, in a toy, in a larger toy auction at heritage if they'll accept them, but they're unpunched, you know, seventies toys, some Batman, some Spider-Man. Um, we have Spider-Man Hulk mini bagatelle. I don't have no idea how to say that word. It's B A G A T E L L E. I, uh, it looks like a, a pinball, uh, or, uh, a Plinko or, What's that Japanese uh, game? Pachinko, like a pachinko almost. But this says it's a uh, baguette. But it's made by Durham. Um, it's 1976, I think. So you know, these are on eBay for 300 bucks. I have three of them. So, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a $300 item. I'm probably more in the 150, uh, but it is unpunched. Uh, they do not have a lot of water damage. They have some warping but uh, they don't have any mildew or mold. So uh, Fantastic Four supercars. And these were, uh, had some sales on eBay for like the $250 range. Um, like these were probably dollar store toys or probably they were even cheaper than dollar. Uh, these are unpunched, but these were my guess. This is copyright 1976. I would say these were probably between 59 cents and a dollar 29, probably at grocery stores, something like that. But another cool item, you know, uh, anything that can add to the value so that you're spreading your, uh, your risk across more things, right? A lot, I don't buy onesies and twosies. I mean, I probably said that before. This is a repeat. But if you haven't seen some of the older videos, here's why. If I buy uh, a book, like a Spider-Man book, um, like the Madam Web uh, first appearance, if I pay a percentage on the top dollar that they're going for now, the movie comes out, it's either a failure or even when the movie comes out, all those books dip. My, my profit margin drops. When you spread your cost across all these items, some things will go down, but other things will go up. Your profit margin basically usually stays the same. Hey, and in the best world, everything goes up. In the worst world, everything goes up, but again, your risk is spread across so much, you, you, your chances of losing lessen. And you know, when you're first start out, uh, you don't have a lot of money to buy collections as they come in. You really have to think about how fast you can turn stuff, where you can turn stuff. Um, I, for, uh, for some time, uh, I was wholesaling books out. I would take out all the good stuff that I wanted. And then I knew a couple of wholesalers and I was sometimes selling it for what I was buying it for but I was getting the good books that I needed that I knew I could move quickly and knowing that those books will move on to somebody else. Um, the market has gotten so good that when I do wholesale now, I, I do all right. I actually double my money on, on what I pay for books coming in. So there's even a possibility of making money on the wholesale market on business to business. So don't ever ex, you know, uh, exclude that idea. Um, even to other local comic shops, you know, uh, competition for me, if it's over 50, you know, 50 miles away, it's not competition. Um, people do travel that distance, but it's usually for a one time, they want to dig through your back bins or stuff like that. They're, they're not regularly coming 50 miles to your shop. And if they are, you've got a fantastic shop or you don't have any competition within 50 miles. Um, I have some people even closer that uh, I am willing to buy from them and they're willing to buy from me. Um, you know, sometimes we specialize in stuff. Everybody knows I love independence. 
A lot of other guys have a tough time selling independence. They'll, they'll sell me their long boxes of independence because again, it's cash flow. Um, they don't need to be sitting on those books, warehousing them. And I, I need inventory of that stuff. So it works for everybody. So when you're taking a collection, not only thinking about, you know, what's my profitability on it? What's the, what is the good stuff? Uh, how long you're going to have to sit on these books, right? If you want three and $5 for every book, you'll be sitting on them for a very long time. Um, even if you're putting them online, unless you're the very top seller and you have the, you, you, you know, yours is up top all the time. Um, you're, you're not moving that kind of weight, uh, move it on to guys that are, um, so I think that's everything. Uh, what I do when I take in a collection, uh, you want to make sure the books get, uh, you know, bagged and boarded the ones that are, are worthy of it. You want to move out as much as you can and you want to get it out where if you can't see it, you can't sell it. So I have a big issue with that. Everybody has saw my basement. Everybody has, uh, you know, saw my stacks and stacks of boxes in the back. Um, but I'm constantly trying to move product out into the floor where people can buy it. So, Hey, good luck to you. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you have any suggestions, again, put them in the comments comments. Like I said, I don't know everything. We're all trying to learn together. If, uh, you have a great solution to some problems, please let us know. Uh, if you have an idea for, for something, you have a question that you think would make a good episode, please leave it in the comments. Uh, other than that, keep reading comics.